Sometimes it happens in ways that we don't even recognize, right. but he still moved. Right. Amen. Appreciate him. We're we'll turning to the Bible's book of Isaiah, chapter 55. I've got a thought on my mind, and, and uh, I look around at the congregation <coughs> tonight, and I wonder, Lord, have I, have I got the right message? Uh, but uh, sometimes we just need reminding. Sometimes we just need reminding. But the uh, book of Isaiah, chapter 55, we'll start reading at verse 6. He said, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the things whereunto I sent it. Thank you for standing for the reading. Uh, like I said, I, I've got a thought in my heart tonight, and sometimes we, uh, uh, we question our thoughts, and to be honest with you, uh, until this morning, uh, I didn't have a thought for tonight. And, uh, that, uh, that concerns me sometimes. Uh, whenever you know you're going to be preaching and, and uh, you haven't got nothing. Yeah. And uh, I thought, well, maybe we'll shout down. I don't know. Uh, but, uh, but this morning, uh, I felt like the Lord laid this thought on my heart. And uh, <clears throat> so, uh, but I thought, uh, we're living uh, in a time when people seem to just come to expect failure. I mean, it's just a, it's just such a common occurrence that people just learn to expect it. Uh, I thought, uh, when I went to school, uh, I, I, you know, I didn't never fail, uh, what you say. I never was held back. Uh, but, Brother John, I really failed. I mean, I, when, it, 
when it come right down to the brass tack, I, I, I didn't do well. Not that I didn't have the ability, I just I didn't want to. Uh, but, I, but I thought, you know what, uh, for some reason, every time I'd get my report card, I would always hope that there wasn't no else on there, knowing that they was going to be. Uh, I mean, it just a, it was obvious that uh, with my uh, effort that I put forth that, that I was not going to have a passing grade. And, uh, and, and I dreaded so much to bring that report card home and hand it to Dad uh, because he knew that I could do better. And, uh, but, uh, <coughs> but the thing is, I just, I just learned to accept the fact that I was failing in school. Uh, because I didn't want to apply myself, uh, and and I thought we get that, and I thought to, you know, and it seems like uh, because of the fact that people have learned to ex ex accept failure, uh, although you read the news and it seems like there's failure everywhere. Uh, I thought the, uh, the the politicians have have greatly failed us uh, as our, as our government. Uh, uh, I thought you could read and and uh, uh, you know in the news right now you've got the sports figures that have that have failed uh, their people. Uh, I thought the, the things that's going on in, in Louisville. I don't care nothing about basketball, but the, we got a truck driver that comes in that work all the time, and he's from uh, he's from Louisville. And so uh, you know even though I don't like basketball, I still like to I like to jab it a little bit, brother John, and uh, with the things that's going on and. And, and but I thought you know, but everything that we look at, it seems like there's just there's failure over and over and over again. But I thought one thing that's for sure, we're serving a God that cannot fail, right. and He will not fail. Right. I thought uh, <coughs> He told us uh, in uh, in verse eleven of our text that I read this evening. He said, "So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth; it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish." That which I please, right. and it shall prosper in the things whereunto I sit Hallelujah. in. And, uh, and I thought as I begin to think about that, I thought that he's, that's God. That's the word of God going God. forth. Uh, and he said, it shall not return void, but it shall uh, accomplish. I never will forget. Uh, bro, Steve and I, we were, uh, I mean, he was real young, and I was young. I was young, so he was real young. Uh, he's five years younger than I am, and and uh, I think I might have been, I might have been 21, because uh, I think he was about 16, and and he and I decided we uh, we uh, we there was a little church over Mount Vernon, and me and him went into we went into revival together, and uh, we preached over there for I don't know six seven nights. We took a night about preaching, uh, but one night I got up and, and I preached, and, and I, like I said, I'm just young, and uh, uh, and I preached, and, and somehow or another I don't even remember the message I preached. Uh, but I but I mentioned Jimmy Swaggart in it and and, and the failure that he had done and, and uh, so uh, after I got down and and me just young and and some old guy got up and he was probably uh, you know he was well my senior I don't know how old he was uh, when I'm 20 if he was 50 he seemed old you know how it is uh, now that you're 40 uh, 60 and 70 don't seem so old no more but uh, uh, but I, but I, but I begin to think about that. And, I wish there was 40, 46, but, but anyway, uh, uh, he got up and he started to, uh, throwing the, uh, back to him and he said, let me know that his son had got saved under Jimmy Swagger's ministry. And, uh, and he went on and, and, uh, talked about how that, and, and, but, but, you know, Brother Sparks was much more seasoned than we was. And, and he got up and he just, uh, simply said, it's not the man that does the saving. It's the word of God that came forth. And, and he made mention, you know, the word of God will not be void. It don't matter who brings it forth. Uh, if, there's, if it's the true word of God and someone begins to quote it, and there's someone around that needs to hear that, I thought it's the word of God, Brother John. Brother uh, uh, Tom, it don't matter who's saying it, it's still God's word. And it will not be void. And I thought, well, we're living in a time when people have learned to accept failure so much. That they just learned to accept it in the in the church. I, I thought uh, when preachers fall or, or preachers uh, uh, let people down, they well, that's just it's just part of life. But I thought I'm serving a God that will not fail. I thought uh, <coughs> he said in Luke chapter one verse thirty seven, for with God nothing shall be impossible. Nothing shall be impossible. And, and I want to, uh, sometimes we look at circumstance and uh, we, we, as we begin to lay them out and we begin to look at how things, and we think there's absolutely no way 
that it's ever going to get straightened out. But I thought with God, nothing is impossible. That's right. I thought that everything else we may try uh, may fail, but God will never fail. Uh, I thought, uh, uh, you know, there's, there's things that uh, uh, Sister Kathy and I have been praying diligently about. And uh, no, they ain't all fixed. They're still a mess. Uh, but I thought, uh, but we are seeing a break that God is moving. And I, I didn't doubt, brother, uh, brother Danny, that God was moving, but but the but the things are so dark and, and the things are so grim. We, you know, sometimes you question, Lord, are you really hearing us? But I thought God hears our prayers, yeah. and I thought, uh, and He is not going to allow our prayers to go out and, and be unanswered. They might not happen when we think they ought to. And I thought God is moving yeah, yeah. in whatever situation. Excuse me, God will not fail us. Right. I thought. Uh, we can look at uh, at Joseph. You know, uh, Joseph uh, uh, is often referred to as the dreamer. And, uh, you know, it would probably be good if some more of us would just simply start dreaming. Uh, you know, and, and what I mean by that, not, not to go to sleep. Uh, we go to churches and there, there's enough sleep in the church now. Uh, but I thought, uh, uh, but what I mean by that is we need to have a, have a mindset. We need to dream about it. Uh, you know, uh, I look back and I remember when I was a kid, and uh, probably Brother John, the reason I didn't do too good in school, because I'd sit there, and, and especially when we went to the Christian school, we had uh, a, what they called an office, which was a space about as wide as this podium, and with a little divider in it, we'd sit in there, and, and had a bulletin board in front of us, and, and had our schoolwork all laid out, and, and I'd open my books, and then I'd start dreaming. <laughs> and uh, uh, I'd think about what I was going to do when I got off work. I'm off school. Uh, yeah, sometimes I dream. Uh, but uh, uh, I begin to think about what I was going to do when I got out of school. And uh, uh, that day, sometimes I begin to dream about what I was going to do in the future. Uh, of, uh, of the things that I, that I had in mind. And, and uh, you know, and, and, uh, but I thought, uh, you know, and some things that I, that I dreamed that, that I had in my mind, that I would, uh, they, they were accomplished. Uh, you know, uh, uh, they, they, I, I got married. I had children. Uh, we, we've got a, we've got a home to live in. Uh, I've got automobiles to drive, and, and you know, and, and, you know, they're not as fancy as maybe it was in my dreams. But I still yet had a dream, oh. the things that I that I that I was looking forward to. And I thought Joseph, as we look at him, and, and he was a dreamer, and, and he see he saw all these dreams, and uh, uh, you know, and, and no doubt he, he as he as he began to dream, and he saw his. His, his, him tying up his sheaves and, and his brother's sheaves bowing to his sheaves and, and all the other things that that Joseph dreamed and, and uh, so no doubt he was he was simply thinking about all these dreams of when they become reality. But see, Joseph didn't realize the things he was going to have to endure before his dreams become reality. Uh, he didn't realize that uh, uh, that he was going to be sold and uh, into slavery and. And his brothers take his bloody coat back and, and, and deceive his dad into thinking he was dead so that his dad would never even come looking for him. Uh, he didn't realize that, uh, that after he sold into slavery that, that he was going to actually land a pretty decent job in, in Potiphar's house. No, uh, it wouldn't, but, but at least he went out in the field slaving. He was just, just the keeper of the house. And then, uh, then Potiphar's wife is going to, uh, to lie on him and, and then he's going to be thrown in jail. Uh, he didn't realize that before those dreams would, would be fulfilled that, uh, uh, that, uh, that he was going to uh, be in the jail and he's going to uh, have some uh, more uh, banker and a butler come in and, and they're going to tell him his dreams and, and he's going to reveal them and, and think, well, surely I'll get out now. <coughs> but time passes on before he's ever recognized. And then he comes out and then uh, uh, Pharaoh sets him up and uh, uh, makes him uh, governor of all the land. And, and things are starting to look better. But no doubt somewhere in Joseph's mind, he was still saying, but I've got a dream that my family is going to be together. Come on. I've got a dream that everything's going to be back together like it should be. But I'm here in Egypt, and they're still over there. There's a family in the land. My, my family is over there. No doubt wondering, Lord, when are you going to fulfill these dreams? Come on. But everything come together because God had given the burden to Joseph. God had put these things upon Joseph. Yeah. God was in the in the interventions. But yet so many times when things start uh, turning around, we want to stick our hands and say, Lord, we need to fix it this way. Right. Uh -oh. And Lord, we need to stop and let God. 
I know there's things that, and like I said before, there's been times that I went ahead and opened my mouth when I should. And it only caused more conflict. Come on. I thought uh, some of the situations we're dealing with now, maybe things wouldn't be quite as bad as it was if simply I could have just kept my mouth shut. But sometimes it's just hard to do. But I thought now situations are unfolding and you still want to step in. But all we've got to wait on God. I thought because God does not fail. I don't know what situations you're dealing with tonight. But I thought, like I said, as I, as I begin to uh, prepare this today, and, and uh, when you when you start preparing a message like this, you've got maybe one direction you think it's going, and then you get to church, and, and you realize that, that may, it ain't going that direction. Lord, what direction is everybody here saved? But I thought, we, sometimes we still face things, and we wonder, Lord, are you hearing my prayer? Lord, are you going to answer me? But God does not fail. I thought Joseph was, was a dreamer. But yet his hand, his prayers was answered. His dreams was answered. Yes. Because he did not lose his integrity with God. Right. Through all of the hardships that Joseph faced, he still trusted in God. Yes. Oh, we must trust in God. Yes. I thought uh, <coughs> Joseph would I mean, God would not fail us. <coughs> When we're facing the enemies of our soul, <clears throat> when we read the book of First uh, Samuel, chapter seventeen, very familiar story of David, just a young boy, and I believe maybe it's Kathy, and maybe Brother Steve, I don't remember who the other night <laughs> made mention of some of this, but David, just a young boy, going out and <clears throat> facing a, a seasoned warrior. I mean, this this man was not only was he a giant, but but he was a seasoned warrior. Right. I, I don't uh, you know I, I've never never been no fighter, never did have a lot of real physical strength when it came to wrestling and stuff. I, I just didn't do it much. And uh, actually, when you grow up with uh, two uncles that's more like brothers than they are uncles, and you're all the same age, you know, you're gonna scuffle sometimes, and, and especially when it comes to Frank, you mean him. We was together very long at all. We ended up uh, upsetting each other. We ended up scuffling. But uh, uh, but I thought uh, uh, you know we 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 we, we sometimes we, we face our opposition and we look and we realize how uneven things look. Uh huh. Uh, and, and with David, I mean, what a there was no comparison. I mean, you got a man that's that's as big as Goliath and just a, a little teenage boy <laughs> and. Uh, and I know we was talking today. We went out to eat. All the, us and all the kids went out, and, and uh, somehow know we got to talk about weight and uh, what they, you know, uh, Sister Kathy made mention what she weighed when we got married. And, and uh, I, I said, "Well, from what I weighed, I'm with an 18 year old, and I might have weighed 140 pounds, uh, and uh, just a little bitty skinny frail fella." And uh, and I thought, uh, you know, <clears throat> I wasn't. I'm was just a kid, and uh, so I, you know, I can imagine. Uh, David, as he comes out, you know, maybe uh, 110, 115 pound at the most, just a little Jewish boy, and uh, comes out and gets this mighty giant. There is no comparison in the natural eye, but it's in the eyes of God. Because David knew that he was serving a God that could not fail. David knew that he was serving a God that, that had delivered him from all those other things, and he was able to deliver him against this. And I thought, uh, uh, but the thing about David was, was he was serving a God that became so real to him that he was able to pass this on to his children. Yet David had a lot of problems. Uh, and David uh, uh, faced a lot of things. David David failed uh, terribly when it came to David. But God never failed. Right. And although sometimes we can stumble, sometimes we can fall, but as long as we're serving God and we right. keep our hand in God's hands, God will not fail. Right. Oh, and it goes on and and, and, and uh, like I said, uh, 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 in First uh, uh, Chronicles chapter twenty-eight, verse twenty, David talking to Solomon, he said, "And David said to Solomon, his son, be strong and of good courage, and do it. Fear not, nor be dismayed, for the Lord God, even my God, will be with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee, until thou hast finished." 
all the works of the service of the house of the Lord. God became so real to David. And David had come to know that God would not fail. That whenever it came time for David to do, for Solomon to do the service of God, David came to him and he said, Be strong and of good courage. Fear not or be dismayed. Because the Lord God, even my God, will be with thee and he will not fail thee. Nor forsake thee until thou hast finished all the work of the service of his of, of the house of the Lord. He said, Solomon, don't get dismayed. It looks like a big task. But God is going to see you through it and see it finished. Because we're serving a God that does not fail. Right. I thought this, this teaches me. Whenever I look at this, that we're serving a God that is not weak. He is not deficient. He is not insufficient. God uh, does not uh, decay. He does not decline. He does not diminish or he does not sink. Uh, he, is, uh, 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 he, is, he does not neglect. He does, he does not fall short. And he does not disappoint. I thought God is never bankrupt. I thought sometimes I look around and I think, Lord, he just ain't going to make it. But I thought I'm serving a God that has never run out. But I thought God is all powerful, abundantly abundant, all sufficient, productive, and ever present. And he will never leave us nor fail us. I thought, I don't know about you tonight, but I thought, I'm glad I'm serving God that I'm serving. Right. I thought, I'm glad I'm serving a God that does not fail. <laughs> John 6 and 38 says, For I came down from heaven, not to do mine own will, but to do that of him that sent me. I thought Jesus came down here. And he faced the cross because he was sent by God, the Father, that could not fail. And I thought David Collins sometimes, he gets to talking about Jesus. And uh, he was telling Sister Kathy, they went to Paducah for Christmas, and Audrey's grandmother goes to the, I think it's the Christian church, and so they do communion every service. And uh, he said uh, they passed around the little things of juice, or the he said, I don't know what he called it. I don't know if they used juice. Uh, they probably used real wine. And he said they had a little cracker, and he said the 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 drink was for the blood of Jesus, and the way the cracker was for his body. And he said, because he died on the cross for us. And, and he said, why did he die? Why, if God's so powerful, why didn't, he, why didn't he just take him off? Because he does not fail us. Right. And Jesus suffered it all because he through God and he being God cannot fail us. I thought, I was coming home the other day and as they come get the song and uh, that radio on and that commercial came on about gold and uh, I don't have no money to invest but uh, trying to tell people to invest in gold because the stock market is up and the stock market is down and invest money in other things and it can you can lose money but as long as you invest in gold then uh, your money is secure but if you look at the stocks even the stock market controls price of gold. Right. It can go up and it can go down. Yeah, you've got so many pieces of gold, but it's still yet the value can go up and down. But when it comes to God, He is so consistent that He does not waver. He does not change. He doesn't go up. He doesn't come down because He's a God. He does not fail. I don't know about you tonight, but I'd rather invest in God yeah. than anything this world has to offer. Is that gets a song? I, I hope I've helped you. Like I said, this is all I had. And I, I thought, sometimes we as Christians, sometimes I, myself, sometimes we have to preach. Uh, Brother Steve, sometimes I think we preach just so we can remind ourselves of the things that
we're preaching about. And sometimes we just simply need to know that God does not fail. Right. We're serving a God that will not fail. Right. And, and I thought, we look ahead and we see all the things, and I thought if we begin to, you know, with all the things that's going on, and I believe the reason that the Bible leaves some things so unclear that we just we just have to, you know, when it comes to the end time and all that, because if we really do, in our carnal minds, sometimes I don't think we could we could stand it. No, we but we're serving a God that does not fail, no, no. and He wants us to trust in Him. Right. And as long as we're trusting in Him, oh, yes. and we've learned trust in him and we and we've trusted him enough that we know for a certainty that he's helped us through all the other things and he's going to lead us on through because he's a god that cannot fail take it as a song let's come as always